Hey everyone, welcome to your fifth C++ Qt game tutorial. We're just going to go ahead and pick off where we left off in the last tutorial. So we just had this rectangle that we call player and you can move it around by pressing the arrow keys and you can shoot by pressing the space key. The goal of this tutorial is to have enemies spawn up here randomly. So they're going to spawn at a random X position on the top of the screen and they're going to start moving down. Now, I also want to make it so that when the player's bullet, when this bullet collides with an enemy, I want to destroy both the bullet and the enemy. But before I do that, um, there's a little, I, not really a bug, but a little weird thing. So you can move off of the screen. I want to prevent this. And uh, basically, we're going to check the coordinates. So we're going to make two checks. So before letting the player move to the left, we're going to check if his X position is greater than zero. And only if it's greater than zero are we going to let the player move to the left. Similarly, when the player is trying to move to the right, um, we're not going to check this X position. We want to check this X position. Now, the, the rectangles uh, or the player's um, X is here. So what we want to do is get the player's X and then add the width, which is 100, and then we want to check if that number is greater than 800, which is the width of the screen. And if so, then we allow the player to move right. This will make sense when I'm actually coding it up. It might help it out a little bit. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do that first. So let's go into my rect and let's look at the key press event. And here, before moving left, we want to check if the position dot x is greater than zero. And only if this condition is true will we let him move to the left. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and similarly, before letting the player move right, we want to check if position dot x plus the width of the rectangle, 100, is less than 800, which is um, the width of the screen. So let's go ahead and check this out. <clears throat> there we go. I'm still holding the left arrow key, but the player cannot move off the screen anymore. Okay, so that's done. Now I want to create the enemies. Um, so the enemies will be very similar to bullets. So I'm just going to create a new class called enemy and copy and paste the bullet code. Now in general, copying and pasting is a really bad idea, but I just want to do it um, right now uh, just to prevent having to abstract a class or anything like that um, because that will take us off topic from what I'm trying to show you in this tutorial. But in general, if you're going to release a game, and I'm not planning on releasing this, you never want to copy and paste. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and create a bullet class. Add new header, uh, I mean an enemy class. We're going to call it enemy. We want to add a source file. And for now, we just want to go into the bullet header, copy and paste it into the enemy header. Um, except we want to delete the bullet specific code. OK, and we want to change this from bullet to enemy. <clears throat> And we still want to keep this move um, slot because we're going to use it. And then now let's go ahead and copy the bullet.cpp. My computer is freezing a little bit, so okay, there we go. Um, and put it into enemy.cpp. And instead of including bullet, we want to include enemy. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we have um, created our enemy class. Uh, let's go ahead and first check out its member functions. Um, here it is. Okay, let me get this out of the way. So when we draw the, um, the enemy, I have to change this also here. Okay. Um, we want to make it the same size as the player, so 100 pixels by 100 pixels. And then we want to connect it to a timer, and the timer will call the move slot of the um, enemy. 
So the enemy's move slot will not move the bullet up, it will move enemy down. So instead of minus 10, which takes it up, we want to add. But I also want it to go a little slower than the bullet, so I'm going to make it 5. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and... Okay, so we created our bullet. And one more thing that we want to do in the constructor is set the position. Set random position. Remember that we wanted the enemies to be at a random X position on top of the screen. So let's set that in the constructor. So set position, please. Um, for the X, we want to do a random number. And I will define this random number shortly. And for the Y, we always want to keep it zero. Okay, so let's make a random number. Include stdlib.h. And this gives us a function called rand that will return basically a really large int. Okay, so let's set our num random number, random number is equal to rand, this really large int, but we want to take the remainder of uh, basically 700. So this is 100 less than the width of our screen because we don't want the uh, enemies to be created off the screen. We want their upper left hand corner to be inside. So that's why we use 700. Okay, so now we have that, and uh, let's run it and see. Well, I have not instantiated any enemies, so let's go ahead and do that. Normally, code like this, uh, such as instantiating enemies, um, etc., you want to keep it in a class. Maybe you'll call this class game, but um, for now, I'm just going to keep it on main because I'm trying to save time. Okay, so in main, let's include Q timer because we want to connect a timer to a function that constantly creates enemies. Okay, so right here, let's spawn enemies. So let's create a Q timer. Okay, and then we want to connect this Q timer. <clears throat> the timer's uh, time out member function. To, and the code for um, that will ha basically I want to put the code for spawning enemies inside the player so the player is going to have a member function called spawn um, I know that the player is probably not the best choice uh, to put this code inside but I'm just trying to save time again so let's go inside the player which is my rect and then we want to give this my rect class the ability to handle slots and we want to give it a slot called move or uh, spawn because this spawn slot is connected to a q uh, um, to a timer so that we can periodically spawn enemies at the top of the screen okay so um, now remember there's two things you have to do if you want an object to be able to handle signals and slots first you have to ha uh, make sure that the object inherits from q object object okay so public q object okay and the second thing you have to include the q object macro right here okay so now this mem uh, this class can handle signals and slots and it has a slot called spawn which is connected to a timer which means that every once in a while this function will be called so now what do we want this function to do well let's add it we just wanted to create an enemy. So let's include enemy. Okay. So now we, we just want to create an enemy. Call it enemy. And then we want to add this um, enemy to the scene. Now remember that every Q graphics item has a member function called scene, which returns a pointer to the scene that it's in. So we want to add the enemy inside the same scene as the player rectangle. So we're going to call the add item um, method of the scene, and we're going to tell it to add the enemy object we just created. OK, now we'll go ahead and go back to main, and we'll actually start this timer. So timer dot start, uh, it's a pointer, so timer start. And I want to create an enemy every 2,000 milliseconds, which is 2 seconds. So everything looks OK, um, but if I run this, I should be getting an error, and I'll explain why. 
Okay, um, missing type specifier int assume. Let's see what that is. Oh, I forgot to change the name of this. Okay, let's run it. I should still get an error. Okay, so remember how we handle these unresolved external link symbols? Now, every time you add new files or you add a new class that uses the queue object macro, usually you want to do build, clean all, build, run queue make, and then run it again. And that should fix that error. It works like 90% of the time. There we go. So now every two seconds, as you can see, we have enemies that spawn up here and they move down. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Now, the next thing I want to do is um, basically have the player's bullet. Right now, the bullet doesn't do anything. It just goes right through the enemy. And I want to have this player's bullet um, destroy the enemy. So when I have a collision between a bullet and an enemy, I want to destroy both the bullet and the enemy. Okay, so where do I want to put that behavior? It makes sense to put it in the bullet class for me. So we'll go into the move member function of the bullet. And before moving the bullet, we're going to check if it's colliding with an enemy. Um, so if bullet collides with enemy, destroy both. Okay. So how do we check what the bullet is colliding with? Every Q graphics item has a member function called colliding items, which returns a list of all the items that are colliding with the calling object. Um, so for example, uh, let's include Q list. Okay, I already have, but it's probably not in your code because I was messing around with this earlier. So let's create a Q list of Q graphics item pointers, and we're going to call it colliding items. We're going to set that equal to, we're going to call the colliding items member function. Um, now, this member function will return a list of pointers to all the um, Q graphic items that the calling object is actually colliding with. So this basically houses all the items that this bullet is colliding with right now. So the plan is to traverse this list and find out if the bullet is colliding with an enemy. Okay, so let's traverse it for um, int i equals zero, n equals colliding items dot size. As long as i is less than n, we want to increase it. Okay, so we want to check that if the type ID, so if the type of the um, of the basically this object that we're currently traversing, and the way we get that object is we have to dereference the pointer. Which pointer? The current pointer. So colliding items i. Okay, so we dereference the current pointer. And we want to check if that type ID is equal to an enemy. And we should include enemy. <clears throat> there it is. OK. So if that's the case, then what we want to do is remove them both. OK. So scene, let's get a reference to the scene. Remove item. What item do we want to remove? first? colliding items i so remove the enemy first and then we wanna also remove the bullet which is just this okay so once we remove it from the scene these objects are still occupying memory on the heap in order to free that memory we have to actually delete the basically we have to delete that object on the heap so delete them both. Okay, first we want to delete um, the colliding item, which is the enemy. And then we want to delete the bullet too. Okay, now if I run this right now, I should be getting an error. And um, let's run it quickly and I'll show you why. <clears throat> okay, everything looks okay. Now let's fire a bullet. And as soon as the bullet collides, we get this um, has stopped working error. Now, when you get this message, it usually means that you're trying to access memory that you no longer have access to. Um, and what we're doing, um, and we're actually doing that right here in the move member function of the bullet. So after we delete the bullet, we still have code that moves the bullet up, but we've already deleted the bullet. This doesn't make any sense. There is no bullet. 
So this code, we don't want this code to execute if there's a collision. So we can simply do that by returning. So if the bullet collides with an enemy, delete and remove both the bullet and the enemy, and then get out of this member function so you, we don't get any memory errors. And that should fix it. Okay. And there we go. We can destroy these enemies coming down. And um, that's it. And I'm running out of time, so I'm going to give an exercise for you guys. Um, for practice, you can try to have it so that these enemies, once they go off the screen, you want to remove them and delete them, similarly to how I removed and deleted them when the bullet collides with them. So right now, they're getting off the screen, but you just can't see them, but they continue to go lower and lower and lower. So delete them. Okay, um, thanks for joining me for this tutorial. We're going to continue with this game for maybe a few more tutorials, and then I'm thinking about starting a new game to teach more advanced concepts. Um, for the new game, I have some ideas. Um, the top one being maybe a, a top-down role-playing game or um, any other ideas that you guys may suggest. So thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you guys next time. Oh, and before I go, I have one thing to mention that I actually forgot, is that I've been putting a link to the code for each of these tutorials. So I recommend that you check out that link. It's in the description of the video. And try to play around with the code and um, see if you can make any additions, fix some stuff. or That's the best way to learn. So thank you for joining me, and I um, hope to see you guys in the next tutorial.